Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? I'm outside. It's the fall. We got leaves falling off the trees here. My girlfriend's sick inside, so I'm not bugging her. She's got that uh, hideous flu-like thing I had a little while ago, which I'm still getting over. I want to talk a little bit about uh, probability and mechanics. Um, hopefully not get too boring. I don't think it'll get really that boring. Um, but, I'll, you know, right off the bat, you know, I say my biggest premise is it's very important to know uh, or understand probabilities and mechanics. I, I read somebody's... Uh, statement not so long ago on, on a forum um, and one guy said it's very important to know this stuff when you're designing games or what have you and, and a lot of people chime in well no it's not it's not important at all okay well I think it is but uh, I try not to be contentious you know I don't like to be contentious anymore um, well, let's talk about this a little bit you know generally for me like a role-playing game you know D&D &D, and I, you know, I, I use this big catch-all D&D is this big catch-all for stuff that isn't even really D&D &D. Um, but anyhow you know, this game is about player agency in a dynamic game world, where, you know, for the most part, things like cause and effect and probability are predictable and stable. And, of course, you got things like magic and weird crap can happen, too. But there's, you know, there's an amount of, uh, I, I guess you'd call me a bit of a simulationist um, at times. You know, I hate that, that freaking model. But anyhow. Um, so then, like, you know, how do you determine success? Because, you know, you're going to do some kind of task resolution. You want to do something. Uh, and it's really divided into, like, three different... Um, categories when you think about it there's there's the automatic success like i walk over here i go talk to this merchant i open this door not the big dungeon door but i just open a door you know i do these things that's that's automatic uh, you don't have to think about it then there's somebody saying well they're going to do the impossible uh you know i jump 200 feet into the air and get on this cliff well unless you have some kind of superpower we don't know about you know you, you can't do that but then there's everything else it's variable success you know i try to climb up this tree you know i i go down you know i throw my grappling hook over here i hit the goblin with my sword you know whatever I try to crack the you know crack this safe all that kind of junk and then so what is what is your success you know um, based on or influenced by and, and you know this is obvious but maybe not obvious to some people but uh, it's based on a bunch of stuff it's based on the, the task itself you know um, the you know whatever whatever action that the players declared um, it's based on you know any kind of situational advantages or disadvantages and if you're trying to sneak around you know are there people are there lots of guards or is it really dark you know and foggy you know um, it's based on the, the attributes of, of the character. And this could be you know, standard stuff, like you think of like their strength or their dexterity or their, you know, their health or their luck or whatever, whatever the attributes the game uses. Um, generally, most games have some kind of numerical attributes, you know, something you've, you've either bought or rolled. Uh, this is what my character is kind of like on, on a basic level. Um, maybe he's just a different race that has you know, a tail or you know, tentacles or God knows what. Um, then it's like based on, um, you know, your success or failure is based somewhat on your global skill set or class you know or even such things as like a proficiency bonus like you know something like fifth edition is done which i think is a kind of a cool little you know make it easier idea um you know and, and as opposed to like what you know 3.5 the direction that went in um and then it's based on your specific skills you know if you're using a game like that or specific like global skill lists uh if you have that um or any kind of basic abilities that person has or character has and then it's based, you know, finally on the degree of proficiency or experience uh, that has, which, you know, that means your level <laughs> or, you know, how many ranks you've actually, you know, put in a skill or however the hell, you know, how many points you put in a skill, whatever it is. But it's your your, your, your ability, your skill um, or your, your experience at that point. And so then we figure out this, you know, um, uh, success or probability of this, you know, this action using some kind of dice mechanics. And, you know, at the end of the day, whether you like a percentage dice or not you know everything is a percentage chance that's just the way math works you know not saying you have to use percentile dice but that's how math works um and probably the most accurate thing if you had the time you figure out all these different variables and, and whatnot and you, you just use you, you assign a percentage chance to everything or a percentage modifier to everything and you finally crunch all these numbers and you come up with a uh, you know a uh, percentage chance and you roll d100 you know and you know roll under okay Except the problem with that is it takes forever. It's incredibly time-consuming. It's incredibly, um, it's not fun. I have this game, it's called Wizard's World. I will never play it, but I bought it for the history and because it's got some neat stuff in there. But that's how the game works. Uh, it's just everything, you know. When you try to hit somebody with your sword, you have to, add, you know, add your your skill and a percentage of your skill, and they have add, add a percentage of their armor and a percentage of their skill at getting away from things, and their percent, you know, God, you know, forget it. Um, but that would be the most accurate, but, you know, screw that. Uh, so we have to figure out, like, you know, in, in many cases, you know, how, how do we do that differently? Not saying you shouldn't use percentile dice, but it doesn't have to get that crunchy. Um, you know, when, when choosing any kind of mechanic to use in the game, and I'm not just talking about game design, but just house ruling. Because, like I said, D&D, &D, like, to me, isn't about the mechanics. 
It's about the spirit of how you do things. You know, I imagine if you use a different mechanic and, and use the basic D and D ideas or something like that, like you know, even something like advanced fighting fantasy. You know, it doesn't matter what the mechanic is. It doesn't matter what you call the attributes, etc. Um, you got to know how the probability works, and you got to figure out well, what, what kind of results am I really looking for are spread, and you want to avoid nonsensical results. Uh, there's a couple of ideas of, uh, or examples of nonsensical results. You know, back in the day when we were kids, we used to say something was a critical hit, and we, you know, either you know used some table we found on Dragon Magazine or did double damage if somebody rolled a twenty. Um, that has the nonsensical result of making um, the percentage of successful hits or successful rolls that are criticals um, higher for somebody that is really lousy at hitting a target than for somebody that's really good. And what do I mean by that? Well. If a guy is really good at, at uh, fighting and he hits a guy in plate mail with a roll of 11 or better, well, he hits him 50% of the time. 10% of those rolls are going to be critical hits because they're going to roll 20. Um, if you're really crappy at it and you only hit them on a uh, roll of, say, 17 or higher, 17, 18, 19, uh, now 25% of your successful hits are criticals. That makes absolutely no sense, but that's how that works. So you've got that mechanic where, like, in, in something like D20, and, you know, I, I use mechanic because it's a good one, when you hit, um, when you roll a 20, well, you roll again, you see if you hit the armor class, and you confirm the critical. That makes 5% of all successful hits critical hits. It's no different than, you know, uh, rolling uh, for the armor class first, and every time you actually make a hit, roll and see if you get a 20. Works the same way. Um, you want to, uh, let's see, what was that other nonsensical result I was thinking of here? There was something else that's nonsensical. Um, well, here, here's another uh, nonsensical result. Um, there's a... A target uh, target number system. You use a lot of dice um, and uh, a lot of d10s, I believe. And it's like World World of Darkness, Storyteller, that kind of stuff. And um, the idea is that you've got to like say uh, you, you got to get a certain number of dice with a seven or better um, to uh, to succeed at the task. But every time you get a one, you have to subtract it. You know that's that's a failure. Uh, then you you can you know you know compare the number of failures to the number of successes. Um, what happens when when things are really hard? If you're skilled at something and you use many more dice, you have a higher chance of botching that uh, than a person that's unskilled, which makes no sense. So the mechanic is failing at some point. Um, so you just have to be you know, aware of like, where, where's the mechanic going awry? And are you, is, can you live with that or is it something that's just not making sense for you? Um, then like things like bell curves, it's very, you know, um, it's very easy to figure out probabilities and, and you know, get, get wrap your head around like, what's a straight up D20 roll or, or percentage roll gonna be like? Um, Bell curves produce different things. If you're rolling 3d6 for task resolution or 2d6 or um, even something like that whole advantage-disadvantage mechanic um, that uh, that 5th edition uses where you're just taking the high... Oh, look, I'm, I'm getting attracting some attention from Yellow Jackets. Um, it still produces somewhat of a bell curve. What happens is in the middle you get almost sure things, you know, if your target number is in the middle uh, or they're long shots at the end. So it's, it's uh, you know, if you're using like a 3, uh, 3d6... It's almost it's very hard to get an 18, but in the middle, if your target number is, is something like a nine or an 11, or you know, that's that's a sure thing, just about a sure thing uh, to get that. So that's kind of a weird, um, weird result. You got you got to understand you know how that works, especially when it comes to modifiers. Because remember what I was talking about before, all these situational things, like how skilled you are at something. You know, what was the situational um, uh, modifiers might be, uh, all that kind of junk. Um, the modifiers and a bell curve, if you're using multiple dice or some kind of dice pool, modifiers work a lot differently than they do in a straight up um, linear roll like a D20, you know, or you know, D100 or whatever else you're doing. Uh, they tend to be very, very powerful in the middle and not so powerful at the end. Um, so they can make huge differences um, at, at some points and almost no difference at all. There's there's a, a level of diminishing returns whether you're adding more dice to a dice pool or just adding like a plus one or a plus two uh, to a, something like a 3d6 roll, which you know doesn't happen as much. If anything, on a, on a d20 roll, not that I'm advocating you use d20, um, in the middle, you, you know, a plus one actually a slightly uh, lower uh, effect when you're trying to hit a target number of like 11 than it does if you're trying to hit a target number of 20. Uh, you know, the math is, you know, not going to go into it because I'm not the best at math anyway. You, 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 you look at it, there's plenty of stuff on the internet, maybe I'll link to some junk. Um, but anyhow, you, you just kind of have to be aware of that. What, what kind of mechanic do I want to use there? Um, and then the other thing too is, you know, in, in mechanics, um, the degree of success or failure is something. Do you want to have a system that uses that or not? Um, you know, with whatever game. Um, and you know, we've been using that for a long, long time. And people never think of this. But the classic example of a degree of success or failure 
is the uh, the old uh, you know to hit and damage rolls in D and D. You roll, you're successful on a D20, you hit somebody, and now well how successful are you at hitting him? Well you roll damage and you find out how much. And you can arguably say, and this is a side tangent, that that that's really their saving throw. Uh, to see, you know, did they escape a telling blow or not? Because you, you think way back when where, you know, every, you know, hit die was a D6. So, you know, if you had four hit dice, it took on average four hits to kill you because all weapons did D6. You know, when the other player is rolling damage, the guy that hits you is rolling damage, what, he, what he's really doing is rolling your saving throw. Was this really a telling blow or not? You know, or did I get away with just getting one hit point of damage? I digress, but, you know, that's the degree of success or failure. Um, so you can use a, a separate die. Another way to use a separate die is in this game called Innomine, which I have to talk about because it's neat. It's not something I'd want to play all the time, but it's a neat game. And uh, they use a, um, a 2d6 plus 1d6 um, task resolution, so it's a roll under 2d6 mechanic, so you might have a, a skill of 10, so you have to roll 10 or less to, to succeed. Um, but then your degree of success is... Uh, based on your roll of another uh, d6 of a, of a different color. And uh, if it, you roll low, like you roll a 1, uh, then your degree of success or failure is relatively low. And if you roll high, like you roll a 6, then you really failed really badly or succeeded really good. And, you know, how that looks is, is kind of up to, to the game master or referee narration. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. That's a different one way to do it. You know, the game like Dungeon World, you know, has that. I've talked about that mechanic a long time ago where they've got that 2d6 roll. Um, but then it's a roll high, so like, you know, um, from 2 to 6 is just failure, a 10 plus is success, but then from 7 to 9 is kind of success, but there's some, it's called a weak hit, and then you have to kind of narrate, well, what happens? That's not so great. So your degree, that has a built-in degree of success or failure. Then everything else, you know, you can you arguably do like a, um, you know, even like a to hit roll. You know, if you if you roll really high, you can say you succeed really well or, you know, you save really well, all that kind of junk. Um, the margin of success in any kind of roll um, you can either have a built-in or you just narrate, you know, if that's your thing, you know, how, how much somebody succeeded or failed. Um, and of course there's, you know, things like the crazy tables that something like Dungeon Crawl Classics has, uh, where it just goes on and on and it's very codified, but you know, nuts. Things are less predictable there. Um, so it's a little rambly, but you know, my point is without going into mathematics, it's ex exceptionally important to figure out like what the heck is going on with a die roll mechanic. You know, not only like why are you using it, but like what effect do these modifiers have? Do you want a system that's really that crunchy in the first place? And once it is, is it doing what you want, or is it going to produce some some results that are really nonsensical? You know, can you can you live with these you know bizarre results of some of these dice pools, or or bell curves, or, or you know adding modifiers to those, or you know whatever? Or is it something that really kind of you know makes you scratch your head and say no, I'm not, I'm not digging this. Um, so you know, did I come to any conclusions? No. But this, these are just important things. This kind of stuff fascinates me when I when I see different different um, mechanics in games. You know, it's not so much I think, oh goody, a new game. I think, well, how does this work? Let me get under the hood. Is this something really cool? Is this some is an alternative? Is this another tool I want to have in my toolbox when I want to adjudicate something? Or is this something I'm like, yeah, this is kind of a fail for me. So there you have it. Happy fall. <laughs>